Okay, now we're going to discuss um, centralized logins using LDAP. LDAP is the lightweight directory access protocol. And the reason we want to do a centralized login is so that we keep all of our accounts in a centralized location. And then we can point all of our Unix, Linux, and uh, OSX servers to this um, authentication box and in order to pull the usernames, passwords, uh, group information, and so forth. Um, so by now, you, sh you should know that you can do this with NIS, and NIS is the network information system. But the problem with NIS is that NIS is a legacy system. Uh, it was uh, invented for Sun machines to use it, and now Linux boxes can use it. But nowadays, most people uh, in an enterprise environment have what is called an LDAP server or a lightweight directory access protocol server in which um, they keep uh, information about the users. So um, here I'm going to show you how you would set up uh, a Linux box to be able to uh, leverage the LDAP directory. Um, later on in the course, you will learn how to set up an LDAP server and how to query it and, and so forth. So I'm not going to go too much into detail on the server part. I'm just going to show you basically um, what, what you need to have on the server part in order to do the centralized logins. And then I'm going to show you how to configure the client in order to connect to the uh, server to look up that information. So first, let me start here by showing you uh, LDAP browser. LDAP browser is nothing more than a uh, LDAP client that uh, I've connected to my LDAP server, which runs on our Linux server. And then, as you can see, I have two OUs. One's called people and one's called group. If we take a look at group first, inside the OU group, I have a group or an entry called LDAP student. LDAP student has um, some attributes, and one of the attributes is an object class POSIX group. And by using this object class, I basically can make this entry here a group. So the name of the group is LDAP student, and the GID number for that group is 105. Okay? And then I also have an OU or organizational unit called people, and this is where I keep my accounts. Group is where I keep my groups, people is where I keep my user accounts. Now, inside my OU people, I have an account name called LDAP student. An LDAP student has several um, attributes. Of course, you have a password, which is right here, and it's encrypted. Um, so you can't really see it. Um, I have the, GI, the, the group ID number for that account, which is 105, the same one as LDAP student. Um, I have the UID number for that account, which is also 105. I have the UID, which is LDAP student, or the account name. And then two more important things is I have the shell for that user, which is bash, and then the home directory. I made the home directory for this user in home1 LDAP student. So later on, when we configure this, uh, your client machines to connect to the LDAP server, we need to make sure that we create this directory called home1 slash home1 slash LDAP student. And then we copy the skeleton files in there so that when the user logs in, gets all the information it needs. Okay, so that's basically how my backend on the LDAP server needs to have in order to do this. Okay, so you won't have to do any of this. I'm just showing you this so that you know uh, what it entails to set this up on the background. Like I said later on, you'll learn how to uh, set up an LDAP server later on in the course. So I'm going to minimize that and I'm going to bring up my party session and I'm going to connect to my VM, which is the instructor VM. This, this virtual machine is just like yours. And in order to set up LDAP on your um, virtual machines, all you have to do is run the setup and then click authentication configuration, which is at the top here, and then run that tool. Okay, the important here thing is to make sure that under user information here, you select use LDAP and that has a check or a star next to it. Okay, and then for authentication, you want to make sure that LDAP authentication is selected, okay? Since for this assignment, you also have to do NIS, later on when you do NIS, make sure NIS is checked, okay? And we want to use shadow and we want to use MD5 passwords, okay? But make sure you use LDAP authentication is checked. So we'll do that and we'll tab over and go to next. 
Now the two settings that we want to have here is the server name. This is the server that has your LDAP directory information. In our case, for this assignment, you will use LDAP.csc570e.edu. Then the second attribute is the base DN. A DN is a distinguished name, and all that is, is basically the root of the LDAP server, which is this here. So basically that tells the Unix or Linux client to go in, connect here, connect to that server, look up that DN here, and inside of there to look for group and people information. Okay? And then uh, our base DN is CSE570E, DC equals EDU. Okay? So I'm going to go to next, and this is the NIS information, so I'm going to say okay to that. And that's it. We're done. That's as simple as it gets. There's a couple more things you need to do besides that. Uh, basically, everything that we did there, uh, it's all written to a file. And the file is the etc ldap.com file. So if you want to do this manually, you can do that. And all you have to do is update the ldap.com file in the etc directory and make sure that host is set up to the host name of the ldap server and base is set up to the base DN which is provided to you and it's DC equals CSE 570E and DC equals EDU. Everything else you can leave uh, as it is. Use the defaults. Okay, so you can use the tool I just showed you or um, you can also use uh, BI and just edit the file directly. The last piece of information that you need to have is you need to go to ETC and you need to edit the NSS switch.com file. This file is very important. This file tells the system where to look up password information, which is all the user attributes such as the home directory, the uh, user ID, and the group ID, and the uh, shell. All of that, it, it's, this is where it tells it. It tells it to go first to file, so use local stuff first. So this is in case you have accounts that are similar locally in the NIS server and the, on the, on the LDAP server. If these accounts are in all three, it will first use whatever you have on files. If it doesn't find it there, if it, it will go to NIS. If it doesn't find it in NIS, then it will go into LDAP. So um, that's the order that I have them, but you can change those. Just make sure LDAP is one of the uh, ones that it looks up. Uh, it's always good to start with files, so look in locally first. If you cannot find the account locally, then go to your external servers, okay? And you want to do the same for shadow. Shadow is your password, basically, and group is your group information. And like I said, passwd is all your user information, okay? So make sure LDAP is part of that list. So at some point, it knows to look up LDAP information, okay? So the reason all of this works is because you have some libraries installed automatically when you did your install, and these are the open LDAP libraries. So if I do rpm minus QA pipe grep open LDAP, you will see that I have our, um, RPMs installed and make this happen. And these are the open LDAP and the open LDAP clients. Later on, when we do the um, directory uh, assignment, you will install the server piece, which is the open LDAP server. Okay, so now if we want to check if this is working or not, we could use the get end command. So you type get end, and then first we want to check the user information. So we type passwd, and then the account that we're going to use to test the LDAP authentication uh, is the uh, LDAP student account. So LDAP student. So this will query the LDAP database. This will query any of the databases that I have for authentication to see if we find an LDAP student. Okay, so it found it, and here it is. LDAP student is the user ID, 105 is the uh, UID, 105 is the group ID, LDAP student is the username, home one LDAP student is the home directory, and bin bash is the, the shell. Now, if we go locally and we grab LDAP student in etc password, we can see that we don't have an entry there for, um, for LDAP student. Now if I log out here and I go back to the server, which is CSC 570E, where the NIS server is, and I run the same command, it also doesn't return anything. So I know for a fact that this is, it is getting the information from, um, 
from the LDAP server, which is good. Now I can run the same thing, get tent, this time group, and then I also have a group called LDAP student. So get tent group LDAP student, and it will find it and tell me that that group exists, and the group ID is 105. So uh, this basically just verifies that um, this client machine, it's looking up information in the LDAP uh, server because this LDAP student account is not found anywhere else but on the server. It's not found locally and it's not found on the NIS server. So the last piece that I have to do before I can test this is I have to go to home one and uh, in there make sure I have an LDAP student directory, create that directory. So I would just run this command make there home one LDAP student. Okay? And if home one doesn't exist, you want to run make there minus p, so it creates the parent directory. Okay, so run that, and then once you do that, then you can you can go to home one, and then make sure uh, you change the permissions of that directory to the LDAP and and make the LDAP student user and the LDAP student group the owners of that directory. Okay, so you do chown minus r LDAP student colon LDAP student for the group two, and then make it home one LDAP student. Okay, and then once you do that, make sure you do CP minus. You can go CD etc scale and run ls minus lah to see all the files, and make sure you copy all the bash files, which are your skeleton files. CP dot bash star into home one um, LDAP student. Okay, make sure you copy those in there. After you've copied those, make sure you run your chone command again to make sure that those files have the right permissions. And then go to that directory, um, home one LDAP student, and run ls minus lah, and you should see that LDAP student owns that. Now I'm not sure why it says NIS student here. That's incorrect because it really should be um, um, LDAP student also for the group. But um, I'm trying to figure why that's the case. I haven't figured that out yet. So don't worry so much about that. Just make sure that LDAP student is the owner. Okay. So now to test this is very easy to test. All you have to do is SSH LDAP student at localhost. So make sure you are you are uh, on your VM and then SSH locally as LDAP student and then the password is student so type student and then you know you can log in and you know this it's using the LDAP because that account is not found locally or on the NIS server and then do a list and you can see that your files are there and then just VI and create a file t.txt hello world and then make sure you can save that. And I was able to save it, and there is the file. And um, we know it's using LDAP for authentication.